Hello, Monica. Hi, guys. Maureen, are you there? Who else is there? Don't see any names. Jill, good morning, Jill. Hello, Maureen. I knew it. You was the first one. I made it just in time, guys. I was teaching. Um, good morning. Is chewing gum doing yoga a no no? <laughs> What do you mean? I do that all the time. You guys don't see me chewing gum sometimes? <laughs> I do that all the time. Just, we're not going to do any headstand today, so you should be good. Um, hi, Catherine. How are you guys? I'm so sorry. Uh, I don't know if any of you saw my schedule. I was excited because my other work, I just started some different schedule, but I'm on call. And that day they had an emergency, so I needed to be there. So I felt really bad. I wanted to teach Yobo, but I couldn't. So hopefully when things start to get normal again and I know my schedule, I can make a Yobo. But I guess you guys have a lot of other classes that you can watch, right? Another Yobo classes. So how is everybody? Oh my gosh, it's been a rainy week. Some people feel good draggy some people feel very energized so rain can bring different feelings for different people um how is everybody i would like to know if there's anything that you want to work on today um specifically with body or if you're in pain or anything that you want to work today let me know that we can otherwise you can start working on Oh, Monica, you're the best. <laughs> it is okay to chew gum. Actually, you guys know chewing gum uh, enhances, enhances concentration. You probably know that you're a teacher. So don't mind if the kids are chewing gum. It's, it, it helps the memory. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, lower back, side by butt, hip. Lower back, side. Okay. My dog. I asked my daughter to stay with him because he goes wherever I go. And he was here, I was like, Lana, get the dog. And he's just crying upstairs because he wants to go down. <laughs> okay. All right. I would love to just stay chatting because I miss you guys so much. And hopefully we're going to have one of those days. Maybe a outside yoga, you know, on a Saturday. Or maybe a yoga outside or... Restorative is a little hard to do outside, but we can still do it. It would be hard to bring all our pillows and our stuff, right? All right, let's start, guys. We're here. We're going to just do this in our hands. Getting some warm sensation here. Finding a seated position that suits your spine. Uh, it shouldn't, you shouldn't feel dragged to be seated right now. So I'm sitting in one of my little stools. So making some fire between your hands. Take a deep breath in, and then exhale, bring both hands into your heart center. Notice your heart beating. Notice the chest pressing against your hands. We're gonna do another warming of the palms. And then bring your hands to your rib cage. And with the same intention, you're gonna feel the spacing when you breathe in between your rib cage. As you exhale, the contraction. Let's take five deep breaths together. Deep inhale. 
and exhale. Close your eyes. I invite you to close your eyes and start to feel where you are in space. Start to notice where your body is. That's grounding. It's putting your roots of energy down to the place that you are right now. We live our lives so proud of doing the multitasking. And multitasking, we are actually not living fully. Not even close to live half fully because we can never focus 100% in one thing. So I want for one more deep breath that you focus in that breath fully. If you have a block, um, you bring that block to the right side. You're not gonna see my block, that's a little far away, that's okay. Bring that block to the right side. We're gonna take a deep breath in and out through the nose. We're gonna reach the right arm up to the sky and then bring your hand to your left side of your head. And then you lower your head. Oh, who else shows up, showed up there? Hi, Sheila, good morning. We're gonna extend that left side neck, okay? Now, my spine is still straight. You're just doing that with your neck. And be very gentle, of course, just knowing the extension that you can take here. Now you're gonna keep your head this way without the hand. The hand's gonna go down towards your block. And even if you need to bend a little bit, try to keep your spine straight. And maybe you're gonna need the highest level of your block. So ladies and gentlemen, I don't know if there's a gentleman, I don't know if Ferd's there today, but fingertips try to be down. My fingertips are not on the floor, they're on my block. And then you just hold here for just a few moments. And then you start to bend, trying to reach your head, the right side of your head, down to the block. My hand's gonna cut off. <laughs> You're not gonna be able to see it. So what I want you to do is to extend that side and squeeze into the right side, okay? Now I know your body wants to do this because it's easier, but I want you to try to bring your hand to the back. And then press the block and come back up. Right. Now keep your head this way. And then with your right hand, you're gonna help the head to come back up. Just helping reach it back. Yes. Lengthen in the spine again. Take a deep breath in and out. And then we're going to do with the other side. Left arm goes up. Left hand holds the outside of your head. And then you pull it gently towards that. Oops. All right. Like for me, this side is way harder than the other side. So I pay extra attention, I pay extra time into the side. I take some extra breaths. Now we're gonna start to reach slowly the fingertips towards your block. Don't bring too far away from you, I want you closer to you. So this intention of squeezing, it gets more compressed and that side of the right side of the rib cage puffs and your head keeps coming down and then towards that side. Hand can go back if it's okay for you. And then you reach. Oh, this side is tense. Okay, we're gonna bring it back. Relax your hand, other hand's gonna help your head to come back up. Very gently, there you go. Now bring both hands to the sides of your neck and just do a little rubbing. Up and down, forward and back. Awesome. 
All right, we're gonna reach the hands back and if you have a belt that is easier for you, do that. Otherwise, if you can interlace your fingers, reach your knuckles back and then start to straight your arms back. Reaching the shoulders, see the difference of having my shoulders down and having my shoulders back. Oh my gosh, it looks like I don't have arms, look at this. This is kind of weird. <laughs> okay, you reach back and then down and then you lengthening the neck. Now, with, I'm going to turn around so you can see it. So, my arms are back, I'm squeezing. Now, release your chin down to the floor towards your chest. slowly towards the sky and then one more time exhale release the arms wherever you are you're gonna bend the knees don't bring your foot really close to you just bend your knees bring the the feet together the knees together and start to lengthen your spine Okay, bringing the belly button in, reach the chest up. Now I'm holding behind my legs here. And then with this, I'm gonna try to release my head back. Now if that doesn't work for you, you don't have to. You can just do some neck rolls if you want. And then on the exhale, we're gonna separate. So the legs start to go out, okay? The legs start to go out. You take a deep breath and then you start to reach forward. When your spine starts to round, it's because you're going too far. So you keep going. So your knees, on, let me show in the front now. So your knees are going out and you're going forward with your chest. Now, if you start to round your mid-back or your low back, it's because you're going too far. So again, is that tilt of your pelvis around your femur. This is what we're doing. Keep going down, breathing in. And then we're reaching slowly back, slowly back, slowly back, slowly back. One thing for the shoulder before we go to our mats. Right hand to the elbow. What I want you to do is lift and then lower. Notice how your shoulder feels as you move up and down. I want your palm of the left hand to be facing on the to be facing the floor. So you go down and up, one more time. Now I want that palm to be facing forward with your thumb down. So you do the same thing, you slowly reach down and slowly up. All right, one more time. We're gonna try to keep that palm facing as as up as you can is a hard is a hard thing to do and then we lower and then we release just a simple thing for the shoulder that can do wonders for for your joints okay now left hand goes to your right elbow you pull it towards you and some people are gonna be here if you cannot extend your shoulder because they're too tight the front um, muscles and the tendons here in the shoulder or if you have a frozen shoulder too it can be tough so we're going to do first with the palm facing down we go up and we go down so with the palm down there's more space for us to do this movement we go up and then down again and then just one more time you breathe in And then now the thumb down, see? I'm trying to turn my hand. So there is an internal rotation of your shoulder. And we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna try to go up and down. Oh, I so wish I could see you right now, guys. Up and down. Some of you are like, oh, I wish you could not see me right now. <laughs> All right, now the palm is face up, so it's an external rotation, and that's gonna make this 
this movement a little harder. So be gentle. And we go down. And then one more time up. And down. Awesome. So now I'm going to go to my uh, mat. Keep your things close by, keeping at least the blocks close by. Okay. So we're going to start today in our backs actually. Laying down in your backs. Relaxing the belly, having your feet on the floor and your palms on the mat, okay? Another way to center. It's a centering um, place to be when your back, your feet, and your hands are grounded. Now, taking two deep breaths with me. Inhale and exhale. One more in and out. So we're going to start what I called a movement meditation. So what we're going to start here is reaching the arms all the way overhead, slowly moving the shoulders. And then when they kind of hit the floor or your blocks or your pillow, you're going to start to lift your hips up to the sky. Okay? Exhale, you're going to lower one bone at a time. And then it's, when it's almost there, your arms are going to go too. So, we're going to do that five times. Keep your nose facing the sky, relax your neck, and then let's do it. Let the breath guide the movement. Now, my extension breath allows me to reach over, still inhaling, still inhaling, still inhaling, still inhaling, still inhaling, and then I exhale, I exhale, I exhale, I exhale, I exhale. So this is a practice. Using your diaphragm and your lungs, it's a practice. So if you still want to follow the breath, maybe you can have your arms and your hips moving at the same time. So if you feel like your breath cannot follow one at a time, so what, what you can do is like inhale, 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 arms and hips going together, exhale, 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 arms and hips going back down. All right, guys, two more. In. right hand to the right knee okay now right hand mostly is gonna hold that leg I'm gonna try to bring to the right side left hand I like to keep in my left hip bone and then you bring it back and then to the side again outside and then back in this is a great stretch for you Monica that area that you need all right left hand outside uh, fingers outside we're gonna slowly now pay attention I know some of you are really fast in your movement because you think that we're going there so what I want you to do is slowly move that leg slowly slowly so I still want your left side of your sacrum down to the floor, okay? I don't want you to lift your low back off the mat. I want that left side to be still on the mat. You're just stretching here and it might, you might feel even your hip flexor in your inner thigh. So 
not the inner tie, not the stretch away, but just feeling that um, tendon in there. Okay, you keep, you don't keep going, you keep holding, and then maybe move the neck side to side, so if it's really tense, you can kind of relax a little bit. All right, now, you start to move your left heel in and crossing just very gently the outer outer right foot and the outer left leg now I want you to lock those two legs like really pressing one against the other the right foot's gonna press against that left leg okay so opposite forces now have your block close by or your stool or whatever you use your books and then you're gonna start to move both legs towards that left side I'm gonna use your block to rest the legs where you feel like you need it. Otherwise, if you don't need any block and if your right inner foot finds the ground, doesn't matter about your shoulder, just try to relax as much as you can. Now, left hand still, still holds the right leg, okay? And then when you're ready, you can start to release. I mean, releasing the muscles, releasing the joints, try to and max as you can so we can stretch that low back, we can stretch the outer hip and leg, you can even stretch your neck if you want by sending side to side, stretching the shoulder, stretching your side, take one more inhale and one more exhale. Alright ladies and gentlemen, we're going to bring it back. Now this time when we go back, we slide that leg all the way down, okay? We're gonna lift and bring both legs towards us. If you cannot wrap your hands like this, this is okay. You can just maybe hold one leg. If you don't have a belt, you can use your blanket and just hold for a few moments. the left, we go up the right. We're gonna do the other leg now. Right leg stretches all the way forward. Left leg comes towards you, interlace your fingers, hold here so that hip can get used to the movement. And then when you're ready, when you feel ready, you can start to send that leg out. keep moving you can stay in place with that leg to notice how maybe you can open more relaxing the stomach relaxing the core muscles and then we bring back towards us now here right hand holds that left leg remember that we're not going all the way this time we're going to stay a little bit. So that hand's going to pull that leg towards the right side until you can't any further because I want your right side sacrum to stay in the ground. Relaxing the right leg that is straight now. And just hold here. Some people feel in your hip flexor, like I said, I said before. Some people feel more in the outer hips. Trying to relax that leg in your hand. slide the right heel just crossing outer ankle pressing into the outer right leg okay so again those opposite forces I want you to feel those opposite forces feeling which muscle that is you are engaging to do this now we're gonna let the legs go to the right slowly and again you can use the block maybe you can use the block to your knee maybe you can use the block underneath your foot so you're not going all the way down. I'm going all the way down. I'm gonna hold my, my still my leg. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and then my left arm going all the way to the left side if it feels good. Otherwise, keeping your rib cage. 
and taking a few relaxing breaths if you can. The breath goes all the way to the chest, all the way to the shoulders, all the way to the eyes. back to center, cross that leg on top of the other one and bring the knees to your chest. Hold here and try to release your legs again towards the hands. Lower your foot down, lower the other foot down. Now with your block or whatever else you're using as a prop, you can bring the pillows underneath you. Now you're going to press your feet down and lift the hips and then bring the block or whatever else. So I'm bringing to the lowest level. So starting here, good place to release the belly, <coughs> good place for the low back. <coughs> And how we start, we're gonna reach the arms overhead but bending the elbows, okay? And then you can either hold here into the forearms or stay here for a little bit. Reaching the breath. All right, what are you gonna start to do now? doing what I'm doing so I had my knees bent but I'm going to try to slide my foot closer to the block you might need a momentum here and then even lifting your heel your heel trying to grasp your foot if you can reach for your foot see what I'm doing when I reach for my foot I'm sliding my upper back down also towards the block so now I'm, my low back is almost not even touching the block anymore. And I know, Maureen, your knees probably cannot do this, so you stay in that position. Some people that have hip issues that can feel a lot, it's not good. If you have a herniated disc or a bulging disc on your low back, is also it's not a good place to be. So you can just stay released how you were before, okay? Now, you that don't have any problem in those areas, try to lift your uh, block higher and trying to bring higher towards your low back. So now you're gonna feel like you're supported, okay? But we're opening the front of the legs. You can hold into your foot and depending on your arm length, you can also open your shoulders by rolling the shoulder blades together. And then we can stay here just for a little bit. See, I'm not trying to force my legs to, to be forward. I'm letting my legs be heavy towards the sides. Do what the body wants to do in this position just for now. All right, now I can kind of squeeze the legs a little closer together notice how it feels. Now you're gonna puff the rib cage even higher, squeezing the shoulder blades together a little bit more. See my, my, my floating ribs here are really sticking up because I'm kind of lifting my chest, my sternum up to the sky. Keep on lengthening your neck, taking another breath. Now how I would keep doing with this pose that it would feel good in my body if this I point my toes now the front of my foot is down on the floor but this can be very intense for if you have very tight quads and hip flexors okay and again for herniated low back it's not a good place to be so we're gonna take another breath and then you can remove your block taking one foot at a time and bring back down 
beautiful job, ladies. And we're gonna bring the knees towards the chest. Take a nice breath in, maybe move a little bit. And then we're gonna reach now our bellies on the mat. We're not gonna do a lot of flowing today, guys. It's more specific poses. Okay, having the forearms down, I'm gonna send my, my camera just a little further away. Now palms down, pressing the fingers down, lengthen in the spine, trying to slide yourself forward. Your feet should be on the ground, shoulders roll back. Now lift your chin away from the floor and notice how it feels. Again, if your low back is compressed here, what you can do is to bring um, a pillow like I just did in underneath your pubic bone, underneath your low belly. So it's not too intense for your low back, okay? So we're gonna stay here just for a few more breaths and we're gonna move a little more of the neck to the side, looking over to the other side, and then down again. Wait a second, guys, I'm gonna try to move back a little more. You stay there. You might fall for a second or two. Shoot. Stay there, guys. I'm just moving here. I have another mat. Oh, shoot. Alright, now I want you to release your chest down to the floor and reach one of the cheeks down on the mat. I'm having a little difficulty. Okay, hopefully you can see now better the whole mat. Resting your back, because your low back is probably needing that rest. Hi, Mui. You're there too. Okay. Alright, so one of our cheeks are down. Now what we're going to do is bend your left knee, trying to grab your foot. If you cannot grab your foot, you remember what you can grab, right? You can come up and try to reach for your leg. Or if you have a belt, you lasso your foot. Now that you grab that foot, you try to bring closer to your butt. Again, for knee issues, if this is too much, that's okay. You just bend your knee and do some of this movement here. Release that, that foot and then bring the other foot towards you. And then switch your cheeks. And then one more again. Tucking your toes, lifting the chest. Exhale, we're gonna go towards a child's pose, but I wanna support a child's pose. So you can use you can use this and you can use this. Or you can use your blanket or your pillow and then lower your cheeks or your head towards your hands or your blocks. Making sure your shoulders are super relaxed.
lifting your head slowly. Taking that prop from underneath you, pressing your hands down, taking the other prop, if you have two like me. And then in a tabletop position, look between your knees and between your toes. And looking at your belly, bring rear the chin close and then roll your shoulders down and then start to tuck your tailbone under. Now start to lift your mid back all the way up towards the sky. Breathe here. And then on back, say on the inhale, you drop the belly, you lift the chin off the mat, you reach it forward. On the exhale, we're gonna straight that left leg all the way back. We're gonna reach the heel down to stretch the back of the leg. We're gonna press the hands and lift towards a downward facing dog with just one leg. We're gonna lower the right knee back on the floor and slide your left leg to the left side with your inner foot down. Take your left arm and reach all the way up to the sky. Now thinking about is not the arm that you're stretching only, but it's the, the openings coming from your chest. Now on the exhale, we lower the hand and then you try to keep sliding the leg until you can bend and reach forward for a lunge. You can use your block if you want to. You can walk the back leg back more and the knee back and then sinking into that hip. We're not going to stay long for our lunge today. We're going to lift the knee, take a deep breath in, and then lower the back foot. Walk your block with you towards the right. Bring your left toes in, and then balance. Here. Sorry guys, you don't have to see my butt. You can lift your tailbone up and let your spine be heavy, okay? Relaxing the arms, relaxing your head for one or two breaths. Trying to balance. Don't send your butt too like offline than your ankles. Try to keep kind of more balanced so the energy is distributed equally between the front and the back of your feet. Okay. Now here we're gonna walk with our blocks to the back of our mats. Now your toes are gonna face forward of your right foot and then the left knee is going to go down. Take a deep breath in and reach the right arm all, <coughs> all the way up to the sky. I ate a seed bread and there's a lot of little things in the back of my throat like really trying to tickle me. You bring it down again. Take a deep breath in and slide the knee back. We're just going to stay in our knees for a moment or two. Lengthen in the spine. Interlace your fingers behind you. Keep your arms bent like this. Take another breath. Open up the chest as you slide your, your knuckles towards your sacrum. As you tuck the tailbone under, lifting the heart up. Look up. Exhale. Bring your chin down to your chest. Lower your head all the way down to the floor. The top of your head goes the knuckles face up, reach, breathe. Exhale, we're gonna cross the arms right in front of us, walking the hands, oh, look at this, spider. Walking those fingers out, 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 out. Breathe in. And then we undoing, use your core, use your leg muscles, and then do the other side. So the left arm now goes on top, and then you walk your hands, walk your hands, feel a nice stretch in your shoulders. And then you bring your hands back. Same tabletop position. We tuck, we round, we look down towards the belly. We open, we lift, we send the chin forward. This time we're going to straight the right leg all the way. We're going to lift towards the downward dog all the way back, stretching the back muscles, stretching the back of that right leg. And then slowly the left knee lowers. 
the right inner foot slides to the right side. We take the right hand off the floor and reach it all the way up to really open that chest. Okay. Exhale gently, we lower the hand as the right foot slides forward even more until you can bend the knee. We can again use the block. Breathe in and out. Again, like I said, we're not going to stay in a lunge today for long. We're going to lift the knee. We're going to drop the heel and walk the hands to the left with the block. Bring your toes in and fold, releasing, releasing. Now, let me tell you something. If folding is too much for your low back, again, if you have problem in your discs, then stretching. The doctor said that stretching your low back Overstretching can be too much for your disc, so don't fold. What I want you to do is just keep your spine straight in this pose, okay? With the block or with the chair, instead of going all the way, because if you're going all the way and if your hips are very tight, what's going to happen? You're going to put all in your low back. If your tailbone cannot tilt, you're going to put all the pressure in your low back. So just to be aware of it, okay? Then we go back to, um, so I was there, right? Now I'm gonna turn towards my left leg. I'm gonna drop my knee on the floor. And then we do one twist here with the left arm. And then lower your hand. And then slide. And then one more time. We tuck the toes, we lift the chest. This time we're gonna reach the arms all the way up, interlace your fingers, press the palms up to the sky. We're gonna bend a little bit to the right side, reach back, bending to the left. And then doing again, if your knees feel, doesn't feel very good, bring a pillow underneath your knees. Now interlace your fingers, open up the chest a little bit more, tuck the tailbone a little bit more, open, lift, breathe. And then we exhale, send your butt back, lower your head all the way down, lift your knuckles up to the sky. Lifting your head and crossing your arms, whatever one you want to cross first. You keep walking your fingers. Just for a breath and then we do the other side. <clears throat> Now, gosh, I need to drink something. Sorry. Now you're going to lower your left side butt on the mat. With a prop. So you're going to sit into your left side in a mermaid way, okay? Now, walk that knee a little further away from that left leg. So, having a pillow underneath your left side increases your lift so it's not too hard and you don't need to do much of this. Now, <clears throat> with the block by your right side, ooh, I feel a lot in my outer hip. You might not, but I do. Now we're gonna take a deep breath in. We're gonna bring it back. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna lift that leg and straight that leg and do the same thing with that right leg straight and your toes facing up. And then we're gonna walk the block, open up the chest, breathe. We bring it back, another pose for you, Monica. We're gonna cross, easy twist, very simple, okay? You can use your block here instead of bringing your hand all the way back. Use that left hand to bring your leg towards you. And then we twist. way back. Bring back to center. Okay, now you can use the other side. Having that pillow underneath your right side, left leg goes to the left this way, block with you, open up the chest, and you fold towards that side.
height. Now we're going to straight that left leg. Slide in the block with you and breathing. If you don't spend time, nothing's going to happen, right? You need to notice you need to give time for anything, for anything in life that we want to nurture, that we want healthy, we need to spend time doing just like taking care of flowers, right, that we put inside of our home. Just the flowers outside needs to wait for the rain. So we need to do it and we need to wait sometimes for things to change. We bring it back. Left leg crosses, lengthen in the spine, hold that leg and open the chest and look towards the left side. And back to center. So, how I recommend you to do your shavasana today, I can show you. You don't have to do it. You can use whatever works for you. So, I'm gonna have my this thing. This thing is gonna support my legs today. This thing is gonna support underneath my knees. Okay. And then I'm gonna have one of my pillows to support my back. I'm gonna have this underneath my knees, this underneath my back, and I can always just kind of like scooch or so my low back's gonna have a little lift so it's not too low on the ground. And then my other one I can be bring to comfortably lay my head heavy. Now if you have a blanket, you can use a blanket. some deep breaths. If your mind is so cluttered that it's even hard to think about where to start, start with your breath. If there is just one thing that you could do today, is this, breathing. We press, we all pass through some hard times and then noticing how resilient we all are, how adapted, adapted to change we all are. Remember that we all have this gift, we all have this power. Sometimes you just need to channel some areas that are dimmed or dark and trying to let them shine, let them see the light. Some days are harder than the other days. But just finding gratitude in your heart that you're taking the time to reach for those dark parts in you so you can find light. We all have, and I'm sure all of us here and there come to places of sorrow, come to places of hopeless, come to places of insecurity, shame, guilt, so many of those, and it's okay. As long as we keep stepping into your mats or keep stepping into your chair, whatever place in your beds and quiet and quietly, just all you need is to notice your breath. This means you are allowing gratitude because just 
just by paying attention in your breath, you are saying thank you. You're noticing how alive you are. You're taking the time to notice your whole body. I can't see you just having you out there sharing your your energy it means a lot so thank you stay in your shavasana for as long as you need stay in your sunday shavasana for as long as you need and just keep being aware uh, of your breath some days this is all we need Thank you so much. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you. Um, I'm glad you feel this way. And I will see you all hopefully soon. Big hugs and kisses. Namaste.